Hey cats, it's Ed after eight bud here. Christmas is almost here. I think we need a double Akabusi. Feeling a tad more like it today after my booster jab. I'm at least moving around a bit now. I managed to do a bit of running, but I certainly felt like the energy tanks have been depleted. Today I'm delving into the news of the Nike Zoom Fly 5. Could it be a return to form for this once lauded, plated training partner to the Vaporfly? Let's find out. Thanks for tuning in guys, it's always appreciated. If you've yet to do so and you're enjoying the content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But also click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos for you. And it really helps us out here at Bud Running Shoe Reviews. If you give this video a thumbs up like, but also share it with your running buddies. Danke schön. An exciting update then with this Zoomfly 5. It's a model that's fallen short for me over the last couple of iterations. I have to be honest, the four really wasn't great and the three, well, kind of the same. That firmer React midsole in both of those shoes was somewhat unforgiving. It felt a bit like a Sinclair Spectrum ZX81 in 2021. It seems though like Nike have realized this and they're aiming to make good. They're throwing the kitchen sink at the Zoom Fly 5 with pretty much all of the running shoe innovations that they've shown over the last couple of years. We'll start with the upper first. We have a mesh now, in all honesty, looks quite similar to that found on 2021's Nike Next% Percent 2. I found that upper to be far more containing and a little bit more forgiving on the foot than the vapor weave bin bag material used on the previous version. I'm glad to see a longer and plusher tongue here on the Zoom Fly 5. The original Zoom Fly had a very short tongue, if you remember. Here's one I made earlier. Oh, Blue Peter. I used to love that program. Very short and thin, and it allowed quite a lot of pressure to get onto the top of the foot. I can remember doing a longer run in these probably three, four years back, and having quite a lot of pain, actually, on the bones on the top of my foot. Wasn't a great design. The now obligatory Nike lace loops on the top of the shoe. You can see that on the lateral and medial sides. Very similar to what we've seen on the Rival Fly 3, the Pegasus Trail 3, and the Streak 7. The same midfoot mummy like wrap that we've seen in the Zoom Fly 3 and 4 is certainly present there. And the green version of Zoom Fly 5 here, I also spot the perforated laces. No, not the perforated laces. Really not sure about those doily-like twines that they've put in recently. They work for some people, but not really sure they work that well for me. Seems like a more familiar shape here in the Zoom Fly 5. Harks back to perhaps the Zoom Fly Flyknit, and there's certainly a closer visual aesthetic to the Vaporfly line of Nike shoes. Midsole now. I think the change we all wanted, or at least many wanted, was to get rid of React and replace it with perhaps a carrier foam. And that's exactly what Nike have done here. We have that SR02 foam that we found in the Vomero 16. That appears to be the carrier here. It's got a malleable midsole material there. It's actually very soft. Then we've got a full length Zoom X scrap here. It's not virgin Zoom X. It's the off cuts perhaps. I'd like to think that they've used old shoes actually, like old Pegasus turbos maybe. Maybe some of the Vaporfly 4%s that just disintegrated and people sent them back. Maybe they've chopped them up in a special machine. That's what I want to have happened, but I'm sure it's not like that. It's just the off-cut bits of other shoes, maybe. That would be good, though, wouldn't it, from an ecological point of view? And Nike suggest here that we've got a full-length carbon plate. And what else would you expect in 2022? One last interesting detail here. Looking at the landing platform in the forefoot and the midfoot area, it certainly seems wider than some of the other Zoomfly models we've seen in the past. It's actually quite similar to the midfoot and forefoot area of the Invincible run. Looks like they've used the same type of profile and they're going once again for that wider surface area. I think Nike have built up the midsole material around the foot a little bit, certainly in the mid to forefoot, to sort of cup the foot and guide it on the foot strike. Quite how the use of that heavier Zoom X scrap material and the SRO2 carrier material, plus of course the carbon plate, will affect the weight of the shoe remains to be seen. Outsole now. Outsole wise, Nike certainly have beefed up the traction with a much larger simplified rubber pattern on the bottom of the Zoom Fly 5. We've got two main sections in the mid to forefoot and in the heel of the shoe with the obligatory plate window as well that you have to have. It's a law now, if you've got a carbon plate in your shoe, you have to have a window to show people that it's there. Otherwise, how would they know? And there have been some shoes recently where you'd never really know that there was a plate in there if you didn't see it. So 
Marketing, marketing, marketing. It does look like they've used a web type setup there in the rubber. I think my only worry there is that lots of debris might get caught up in the segments between the rubber. Could be a bit of a magnet for grime and grit. But we'll only know when we get it on foot for testing. But I'm very glad they've addressed that and they're not going for something that's exactly like the rubber that was on the Zoom Fly 4. Again, we see an increase in outsole surface area between the mid to forefoot. That's in line with all those other Nike shoes out there, the Infinity Run, the Invincible Run. That does seem to be a big thing at the moment for Nike. The stats and the data they've collected must be telling them that that is helping to stop injuries and they're prepared to sacrifice weight to increase that forefoot and midfoot surface area. That is very different to the Zoom Fly original here. Quite a narrow shoe really, certainly in the arch. I think that might be quite a welcome addition to some people if you found the previous versions of the shoe at all unstable. I've got to be honest, that was never a real concern for me in any of the versions of the Zoom Fly up to this point. But I bet there's a load of people out there that had wider feet perhaps that wanted a bit more stability. It will be interesting to see how Nike price this one up against some of their other competitors' models. The likes of the Endorphin Speed 2, the Streak Fly, and the Takumi Sen, obviously, have all appeared on the scene recently, or will do, with so many models in this sort of category of shoe. Nike will have to be very careful as to how they price it, especially with the huge popularity of shoes like the Endorphin Speed from Saucony. And of course, you've got that massive hype surrounding the Takumi Sen 8, a shoe which I haven't given up on yet. I will get out and do some more miles in it. Just didn't blow me away at all, but I will persist with it. Don't you worry. I think this is a big shift for the Zoom Fly series from Nike, and it was much required. It was really needed. That shoe was starting to go a little stale. It's just getting left behind in the past. Shoe tax just moved so quickly over the last three years. I think there's more of a regard for durability here with that carrier foam and then protecting the Zoom X foam that supplies the Vavavoom. Don't forget, it's a reintroduction of a carrier foam because the original version of the Zoom Fly, I believe, had a React core. I might have to cut open one of my pairs to actually double check that. Where's my saw? My gut feeling is the weight of the shoe might be going in the other direction. It might be getting a little heavier. I don't think people will get awfully upset about that this time around. I think we're going to be in for a slightly more forgiving, more compressive shoe, certainly than the Zoom Fly 4 was, though this might upset a few people that would buy the Zoom Fly series with training and racing in mind. If they didn't want to shell out for the much more expensive Vaporfly model. What's your take on the forthcoming Zoom Fly 5 from Nike? Let me know in the comments below. It's musical interlude time. It's a Christmas one as well. Guys, please check out the fantastic Chaz and Dave's Christmas Knees Up. You can find this on YouTube. I'll put a link into the description so you can go and check it out. Chaz and Dave, fantastic musicians, right at the top of their game. They get some great artists to come on and help them out for this show, which appears like it's being performed in a pub, but actually a Apparently it was just in a studio and they built the pub in the studio, which is pretty awesome. Eric Clapton appears along with Lenny Peters and Albert Lee. There's some fantastic playing here. And I've got to be honest, one of the best bass players and vocalists ever, Dave. I mean, he was just so good. I was really lucky to be able to meet Chaz before he passed away. What a lovely man. Just the same off stage as he was on. What a legend, like an idol of mine, real hero to me. I'm so glad I got to meet him before he passed on. But this show can't help but bring a smile to your face at Christmas. It's just wonderful. Very mired, I suppose, in the 80s, but everyone's just having so much fun. And it just brings a smile to your face, you know, now where everything's a bit odd. It just makes you realise there were simpler times and you can transport yourself back there with Chaz and Dave's Christmas knees up. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of today's video, guys. It is always appreciated. Hope you're staying safe out there. Remember, in these difficult times, when you get up in the morning, you're always worth it. You're a legend. You're a star. Keep on going. Keep on powering forward. There's always somebody rooting for you, and that's me. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and also click the bell below for notifications of when I roll out those new videos for you. And it helps us out too if you give this video a thumbs up like, but also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.